Well hello and welcome to this video tutorial which is a companion to tutorial 24 at markplex.com that is m-a-r-k-p-l-e-x.com where there are many other useful I hope tutorials. As always this tutorial is designed to demonstrate easy language programming techniques rather than being a useful indicator in its own right and um, this particular tutorial was something that I created just to try and attempt to create a bounded indicator for volume. Now obviously volume is not a bounded indicator. Volume can go up to whatever you like. But I thought it might be useful to have or to at least show how we could create something where the volume is varying between minus 0.5 and plus 0.5. And as you can see here on the chart I have uh, put the indicator and uh, the scale for it is on the to the right of the chart and uh, I've already applied it to the chart uh, so I'm just going to go format analysis techniques and just go to volume turn the status of that to on and you can see how the the volume there is as compo compared to the this what I call the pseudo oscillator and incidentally if we wanted to change it from a line to a histogram what we do is we just double click on the blue line then make sure we've got volume OSC here, click on histogram and click wait and there we have the uh, volume oscillator. So let's uh, look at the code and you'll see that we have an input this is set to, we, I called it the average bars, it's the basically the bars that we're going to look back to find the highest volume in all those bars and volume 1 is set to be equal to the highest volume of the last AV bars bars. In other words, the highest volume of the last 50 bars. And then we're plotting two things. We're plotting zero, which is always going to be zero. That's the midpoint. We're giving it a color of light gray. And we're also plotting the current volume divided by value one, which, if you remember, is the highest volume of the last so many bars, in our case 50. And then we're subtracting 0.5. And the reason we're doing that is because we want the the volume pseudo volume oscillator to go from plus 0.5 to minus 0.5 and and back completely arbitrary numbers but uh, this is what we get as we just looked at now if you remember the tutorial we also had a a little enhancement to that oscillator and that gave us what I'm calling volume oscillator 2 here and you'll see again that uh, the defaults coming up as a line. I'm just going to double click on that, go to style, histogram, make it a little fatter. And then you can see this rather nice variation of yellow to cyan, yellow at the uh, the high points and going down to pure cyan at the uh, the extremities below. So, well, maybe not quite pure cyan, but you get the idea. So let's just look at what we did to to create that. Uh, we added two inputs, and these are the uh, the color inputs. We added a variable color, and then we di really didn't make many other changes apart at the bottom here. We used the trade station easy language function norm gradient color, and this is the uh, the little fella that will allow us to change the color on a continuous basis. And the inputs are the uh, in our case plot vol osc, and that is taking the value that is plotted here. And as you can see, we're using this uh, word here to uh, tell us what it is. We're setting this to true which means that the value will go below uh, zero. We've got this value here which tells the function how many bars to look at in terms of the color variation and I've just put in av bars divided by three. You can play around with that uh, just to see experiment and see what you get and then we've got the two color inputs that tell it which colors to vary between and then we use set plot color 2 being plot 2 and we set it to the color that we're calculating above and now if either of those if you want to learn more about either of those as always you can just right click on the uh, the name and uh, look for definition and you can get some more information there or indeed you could actually open the function and see what it's doing so let's just uh, go back to the chart and uh, see again what that looks like. Now one of the things I just wanted to mention because I think it does sometimes confuse people is if in the indicator we had decided well you know what we're not going to have cyan I want to have red. We then verify 
the indicator I just pressed F3 to, to verify and then we go back to the chart you'll know that absolutely you'll see that absolutely nothing has happened what we actually needed to do is to go into the analysis techniques and change go click on inputs change the lower average color to red in this case and close that and you'll now see we get this interesting effect of going from yellow to red and another thing that we could have done there is we could have gone and just go back there and click down here to default and what that will do is it will change the input setting in the actual indicator so that in the future if we apply that indicator it will come up as red so if we close that and then we just go back to the indicator you'll see that what's happened is asking us it's saying this file has been modified outside of the editor window do you want to reload it we're going to say yes and uh, sure enough we're now getting red there as an input so anyway I hope uh, that is uh, useful it's quite a simple indicator but uh, does demonstrate a couple of interesting uh, features of easy language uh, please go to markplex m a r k p l e x dot com to see other useful tutorials and please sign up for our email mailing list so that I can let you know when I create new tutorials or provide other information which may potentially be useful to you anyway thank you very much